Okay, class, today we're in section 9.3, solve quadratic equations by graphing. Section 9.3, solve quadratic equations by graphing. Before, we solve quadratic equations by factoring. Now, we will solve quadratic equations by graphing. Key vocabulary, quadratic equation, x-intercept, roots, and zero of a function. A quadratic equation is an equation that can be written in the standard form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, where a cannot equal zero. You have used factoring to solve a quadratic equation. Now you can also use graphing to solve a quadratic equation. Notice that the solutions of the equations ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero are the x-intercepts of the graph of the related function y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so then basically what they were saying is if you take a quadratic equation such as x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0 and you solved it by factoring, you would end up with x is equal to 1 or x is equal to 5. So this we know how to do. Here, if you solved it by graphing, and don't forget when you're graphing, you can use two techniques. You can use the table, or you can find the axis of symmetry, then the vertex, then you locate um, one point, or excuse me, two points that are lower than the x value of the vertex. Well, anyway, after doing so, when you graph, you end up with 1 and 5. And you see the axis of symmetry is that line right there which appears to be at, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which appears to be at 3. Okay, um, at any rate, you'll notice that when you graph, the x-intercepts on the graph are the same as the factors you figured out for uh, when you factored this particular equation. Right, you came up with x is equal to 1, or x is equal to 5. Don't forget, these are also called zero values also. To solve a quadratic equation by graphing, first write the equation in standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Then graph the related function. y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. The x-intercepts of the graph are the solutions or roots of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Okay, example one, solve a quadratic equation having two solutions. Solve x squared minus 2x is equal to 3 by graphing. Solution, step one, write the equation in standard form. So we got x squared minus 2x is equal to 3. To put it in standard form, we're going to move that 3 to the other side. So we got x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Now that we have it in this form, now we're going to do step two, which is to graph the function. So step two, graphing the function, is based on everything we did in section 9.2. Everything we did in section 9.2. So after graphing, we come out with that the intercepts are negative 1 and 3. Negative 1 and 3. So these will be the solutions to the equations, negative 1 and 3. Now that should be the explanation that you need. But I'm going to do just a brief refresher on how to graph when they say graph, and you gotta be able to do it quickly. All right, here we go. So now don't forget, now when you got a graph, you gotta be able to do these steps kinda quick. When you got a graph, the first thing you gotta do is find the axis of symmetry. Negative b over 2a. In this case, we end up with a negative two, excuse me, the negative sign is in the problem, and b is a negative two, a is one. So a negative times a negative is a positive, and then 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the axis of symmetry is 1. That's what they got right there. See that 1 coming down right there. That's the axis of symmetry. All right, next you got to go through and find the vertex. Got to find the vertex. So how do we find the vertex? We take that 1 and put it back in the original equation. When we put that 1 back in the original equation, we end up with negative 4. So y is equal to a negative 4. So that means that your vertex then your vertex is 
1 and negative 4. And you can see right here, they're at 1, x is 1, and y is a negative 4. So that's the vertex. Now this is what you have to do in order to find your intercepts. Okay, after that, you got to go through and find your y-intercept. Don't forget the y-intercept is the easiest one to find because the y-intercept occurs when x is 0. So if x is 0, that means that this is gone, this is gone, and I'm left with a negative 3. So my y-intercept then is negative 3. So where's negative 3 on the y-axis? 1, 2, 3, right there. All right. Next, I find one more point after the or lower than the y-intercept. Or remember in the book they told you to find two points that's lower than the x value of the vertex. So one, that was zero, and the other one's going to be right here. So we're at x is equal to a negative one. So we're going to put that back in our equation. x is equal to a negative one. That's where I'm at right there. x is equal to a negative one. Okay, so I take my x being a negative one, I put that back in my equation. So I end up with a negative one squared, that's in place of that, minus two times a negative one, that's in place of the x, and then minus three. All right, I evaluate what's one squared, negative one squared, that's one. A negative two times a negative one is two, and I bring down my negative three. One plus two is three, three minus three is zero. So my next point then is a negative one, zero. Once again, my next point is negative one, zero. Now where's negative one, zero on the graph? That means x is a negative one, y is zero. That means I'm right here. All right, I've already plotted this point. That was my y-intercept. And this right here was my vertex. And don't forget, this right here was your it will not be 100%, but this right here was your axis of symmetry. Right there. Trying to get it even right there. Okay, so now that's your axis of symmetry. So now, you got to find the points on the other side. So here, you're one distance, you're one unit away from the axis of symmetry. So your next point is right there. All right, here you are one, two away from the axis of symmetry. So your next point is right there. One, two. All right, so now after making your graph, you find out that you have two x-intercepts. So in other words, you have two solutions. You have x being a negative 1 and x being 3. And after doing so, you have completed the problem. All right, so once again, again, a quick refresher. All right, first thing you do is you set the equation equal to 0. Then you ask yourself, will my equation open upward or downward? The a value is positive, so it's going to open upward which means my vertex is going to be a minimum. Then you find your axis of symmetry. In this case, that was 1. Then you find your vertex by taking the axis of symmetry and plugging it back into the original equation to find your y value. And your vertex ended up being a negative 4. You plot at that point. Next, you find a y-intercept by setting everything equal to uh, by setting x equal to 0. When you do that's gone, that's gone, and you're left at negative 3. So your y-intercept is negative 3. After that, you find one more value beyond that. And that was when x was a negative 1. So when x is a negative 1, you end up with a value of 0 for y. After that, you plot your points. After plotting the points, you reflect. After reflecting, you can locate your intercepts as so. All right, now in that we solved, or at least we showed you how to graph, in sections 9.1, 9.2, and also again on example 1. Now we're just going to explain the example as it should be. By now, you should know how to graph and, and uh, know all the steps involved with that. So here we have example 2, solve a quadratic equation having one solution. Solve a negative x squared plus 2x is equal to 1 by graphing. Solution, step 1, write the equation in standard form. And we all know by now that we write it in standard form, it's going to be equal to 0. So we got a negative x squared plus 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. Then we graph. We all know the steps now to graphing. After graphing, you will find out that all you have is one solution. And that solution is at 1. So x, the x-intercept here is at 1. All right? 
The x-intercept is at 1. x is 1 when y is 0. Now, once again, you find this out after you graph. Okay, now what's involved with the graphing? You see that it's a negative, a negative A value, so you know it's going to open downward, which means your vertex is going to be a maximum. Then you go through and you find your axis of symmetry. I can tell from the graph that the axis of symmetry is at 1. Then you locate your vertex. All right, everybody should know how to do that by now. Then you locate your y-intercept. Everybody should know how to do that by now. And then you, could, then you locate one additional value. And then from there, you can find out the roots of the equations or the solution also called the uh, intercept. In this case, the x-intercept. Okay, example three, solve a quadratic equation having no solution. Solve x squared plus 7 is equal to 4x by graphing. Step one, write this equation in standard form. x squared plus 7 is equal to 4x. Well, then in standard form, we have x squared minus 4x plus 7 is equal to 0. Step two, we're going to graph the function. We follow the same steps as always to graph the function. After graphing, we find that the graph has no x-intercepts. So the equation of x squared plus 7 is, is equal to 4x has no solution. Once again, steps involved with graphing a quadratic equation after you put it in standard form is a value is positive. So we know it's going to open upward and our vertex is going to be a minimum. Next, we find our axis of symmetry. And we can see right here that this right here is our axis of symmetry. And it looks like it's going to be at x is equal to 2. From there, we find our vertex. And that's our vertex right there. From there, we find our, our y-intercept. That cancels. That cancels. End up going to 0. End up going to 0. So our y-intercept is at 7. 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? Um, and then from there, we get one additional point if we need it. So we'll be over here somewhere. We'll be at x equals, uh, let's see. Zero. We'd be at x is equal to a negative 1 if you want to use that. Okay. But the main thing is we realize after we make this graph, see how high it is up there? It doesn't even cross the x axis. So therefore, no solutions. Okay. Key concept number of solutions of a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation has two solutions if the, if, if the graph of its related function has two x intercepts. Two x intercepts, so two solutions. A quadratic equation has one solution if the graph of its related function has one x intercept, like so. And a quadratic equation has no real solutions if the graph of its related function has no x intercepts. Does not even touch the x axis. There we go. Example four find the zeros of a quadratic function. Now, this goes back to the introduction of this particular lesson. Find the zeros of f of x is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 7. Solution, graph the function. f of x is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 7. After graphing, you find that the x-intercepts are negative 7 and 1. Negative 7 and 1. So the zeros of the functions are negative 7 and 1. So in other words, you're finished. In other words, you found this without factoring. You found it through... Um, through graphing. Also, they want to remind you here that the way you learned to find to find the intercepts previously was you would have went through and you would have factored this out. And when you factored out, you would have came up with x plus 7 times x minus 6. You set that equal to 0, and then you found the intercepts, negative 7 and positive 1. Negative 7, positive 1, same thing. Example 5. Approximate the zeros of a quadratic function. Approximate the zeros of f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 1 to the nearest tenth. Okay, on this example, they want you to see what you would need to do in, or, in order to figure out the x-intercepts when the x-intercepts are not exact. So after graphing, you should notice that the x-intercept here is between negative 4 and 3. And the x-intercept here is between negative 1 and 0. Okay, in that this problem is not required as far as us knowing how to do this this year. All I want you to do is to read step 2 and be familiar with the steps involved. 